I think on the idea where you were talking about people want to know the topic of a conversation before they step into it, that would speak to the sociological character of most of human civilization. You know, what is the topic? What is the intelligibility? Is it Christian? Is it, is it Hindu? Is it, you know, what, what is it? And there's a way of, oh, I walk in, oh, okay, this is, um, this is a Protestant town. Oh, okay, this is an artist community. Okay, I know the topic before I'm there, right? And so basically, the, the issue is that in these kind of uh, conversations that, that we're having, there is a certain modeling of in the very dialogue of the sociological circumstance of global pluralism, where people do not know the topic. Uh, you go in and find out. Like, you know, Jordan Peterson talks a lot about chaos versus order, right? What we're seeing today is actually what global pluralism requires is some sort of capacity to make order in the encounter of chaos. It's not a, we need to balance chaos and order. Not that Peterson is saying that, but a lot of people, this kind of idea that you need some order and you need some chaos. Okay, I don't necessarily deny that, but there's actually some sort of ability to order chaos, in, to make chaos intelligible. And then it's as if it was never chaos, actually. Uh, it was always just various notes that were coming together to make a harmony in music, right? So in the same way that if for most of human history, what you've had is creating social societies are formed according to an abstract social form. You know, that's kind of like there's a form. What we're seeing now is seemingly the need for almost an abstract social art or ability. Like you were saying, the ability itself. And I think that's, that's getting added is in a global pluralistic age, the address is not a form, but a certain shared capacity. Which, because if everyone you ran into, regardless of their backgrounds or diversity, were capable of um, finding order in chaos or entering into a relationship, not needing to know ahead of time what it was about, but they were able to apprehend what it was about in the experience of it, that right there would be an abstract social art that would allow community across difference without the smothering of the difference or the need for people to know the topic ahead of time. Or are we capitalists? Are we communists? Are we whatever? Well, let's go in and find out, right? That is, I think, getting at what exactly is needed for the quote unquote meaning crisis. Because another way to kind of put at it is in utilitarianism, I don't, th there is an abstract social form, reduce pain. There's no art. It's very given. Just do this thing, formulate a si society accordingly, right? Follow the law. Okay, got it. What, and, and what actually ends up happening is once you start moving to virtue ethics, well, there's more like an, an art form, a kind of act, an ability to read the room, to read the conversation, and then follow it, not knowing where it's going to go, but you're able to follow where it goes. It's like you were saying with Guy the other day, like the, um, the way you need to go is found in the chase. Just follow the thing, and then that's the way you need to go, right? That's pointing at what an abstract social art would look like that would make possible a global pluralism that doesn't fall into the horror of anxiety. But then I think that would require an education school system that is teaching people that that is what it means to be educated. Right now, we, this is the problem. People believe you are educated if you know the topic. An educated person knows the topic. An educated person knows the facts. An educated person has memorized what's going to be said. They know the script. Most of education today is, as I talk about with Neil Postman, is a trivia structure. It is about knowing ahead of time what's going to happen. It's about having order, and then it occurs. It's about, it's actually an intelligent person is, a, is able to keep the conversation in, in, in bounds. Like, an intelligent person can stay on topic, Right. Well, that means intelligence is precisely that which makes impossible global pluralism. Like an intelligent person is precisely someone who's not able to engage in an abstract social art, but someone who requires an abstract social form, by definition, that means you can't handle the other, like the true other. That means you can't handle difference. So we literally, and the key to education is not to merely think about it in terms of subjects. This is what, you know, the Marshall McLuhan idea that the medium is the message like the material that you get from the TV, and it, the information being from the TV changes how you experience the information, regardless of the show. He was more interested in the medium of information, like a William Ong, writing versus TV. Like the same information from a book will be experienced by your brain differently than if you get that same information from a television or from YouTube or from Instagram, that the medium is the message is his idea, because every medium suggest certain values in the very medium. So for example, from TV, 
it says that learning is inactive. It's passive. You turn off your brain and you receive. That's what it means to be educated. But in a book, educated means to be actively reading the words. You have to be very on. You know, um, I think he called books a hot medium because your brain has to be very active. Where with a TV, I think he called it a cold medium because it's very cold, right? So the mediums bring with them various associations. The current classroom associates education with trivia and knowing the topics. And so that's the value system that people bring forth, right? Regardless what they teach in the classroom, the medium of the classroom creates certain associations of what it means to be intelligent versus not. We are literally making people associate intelligence with exactly the opposite of what is needed to do with the reality of global pluralism. It's a wonderful mixture. Uh, because what you need is the ability to find the topic in. Emergency, you know, there's a lot of talk about the emergence, right? The ability to handle emergent, you know, Metama Brendan, you know, there's this idea. Yeah, that's right. But the ability to apprehend emergence and to be the conditions of emergence and it to be intelligible to you is an abstract social art or act that is what needs to be trained in people today so they can, in, so they can encounter the other and not be existentially destabilized. So they can encounter choice and not be existentially destabilized. Because here's the reason why, one of the reasons, and I'll give it back to you. Um, one of the reasons choice overwhelms people is because it feels so final. It feels so like, oh my gosh, I need to know everything before I make a choice. I need to know the topic. I need to know all the consequences. I need to know everything. If you instead knew or believed in your capacity to make it work, regardless what you do, you know, whatever choice I make, I'm going to make it work. Wherever the conversation goes, I'm going to make it happen. No matter who I run into, I'm going to make it intelligible. If you had that kind of confidence, dare I say, then choice would not feel so apocalyptic, so like overwhelming because it's like, well, we're going to make it work. Yeah, I choose this because I could choose X or Y, but regardless what happens, I'm ready for it. Now, that doesn't mean choice is arbitrary, but it means you're anti-fragile, as Nassim Tlaib talks about. You're able to make choice and then not feel so overwhelming because you have the capacity to find the topic in the choice, not know it ahead of time. So these things are all connected. And the very fact that we've just kind of been trained to associate education with staying on topic versus finding the topic, you know, chasing something, like, like knowing where you're going versus finding the way in the chase, these all contribute to our inability to, um, to locate an abstract social art, which then my main point is Dealing with the meaning crisis requires this abstract social art, I think. Like, the problem is there is no abstract social form that will deal with the meaning crisis. It has to be an abstract social art that's going to deal with the meaning crisis. Now, everyone from their position will have their own unique form, Christianity, atheism, whatever. But the, the meaning crisis is a result of the between space of worldviews. Like, not in a worldview. We see lots of people who are still in a worldview, who don't interact with difference, who have plenty of meaning because they close themselves off from the things that destabilize their source of meaning. No, the meaning crisis is what occurs to people between worldviews because that's the place of destabilization where then it feels all arbitrary. And to deal with the between space, that's where you need the abstract social art. That's where you need my friend Bernard Hankins, we've got, he's called like cipher mentality, like a hip hop cipher where people can make it happen. It just come, it's like a cipher mentality. You're able to just make the cipher work. You're able to improvise the dancer. These are the things that I think are needed today. And I would also point out, and then I'll give it before going into it. I think when you start talking about the movement from the Father to Jesus to the Holy Spirit in Christianity, once you get to Paul, it's basically like, okay, we have to think live active situations that we didn't know we were going to encounter ahead of time in light of the Holy Spirit, in light of the person of Jesus. So there's actually a movement, I think, in Christian theology that actually is kind of moving, dare I say, toward a, um, a cipher mentality, a kind of abstract social art that, um, that is brought out in what I would call the situational reasoning of Paul. But that's a different topic. We are happy to go into that. But I think there's an abstract social art here that becomes primary.